welcome. And thank you for joining us for the Mark Montclair Sunday morning worship experience. We hope you will be blessed by what you experience today. Whether you have joined us in the sanctuary or are worshiping with us online, feel free to worship and sing along as we are together in spirit with God and with one another. Hi, welcome to the Mark Montclair. Welcome to the Mark. Welcome, welcome to the mic. mic. We're glad you're here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Leslie Houseworth Fields, and I welcome you to this Resurrection Sunday worship service. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us in the virtual sanctuary today. And as the Spirit leads you, I encourage you to clap your hands, to stomp your feet, to dance, however the Spirit moves. I encourage you to worship God in that way. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to What's going on at the Mark? The Mark Scholarship Committee is accepting scholarship applications from high school students who are scheduled to graduate this year and in 2023. Recipients must be members of St. Mark's and be active in the life of the church. For more information, please call or email the church office. St. Mark's United Methodist Church will host a virtual program geared toward teenagers age 13 and older. Connecting Through Comics is a four-week program scheduled for April 23rd, 30th, May 7th, and May 14th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Participants must have access to a computer, laptop, or iPad and access to the internet. 
Registration is limited to 20 students. For more information, please call or email the church office. Every home in the United States is now eligible to order free at-home COVID-19 tests. Orders will usually ship in 7 to 12 days. For more information, please visit www.covidtests.gov. Stay connected. Want to find out about what's happening at St. Mark's? Ways to become involved? Or do you have a need or a concern? We want to stay in community with you. Fill out a connection card online so we have your current contact information and can reach out to you. Happy birthday to all those celebrating a birthday this month. We love you and we pray for your continued safety, health, and happiness. In this time of uncertainty, please remember the sick and shut in in your prayers and with a call or card. That's what's going on at The Mark. Family, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Pastor Leslie Houseworth Fields here at The Mark Montclair, and I am glad that you are joining us on this Resurrection Sunday. I invite you to visit our website, www.themarkmtc.org, to learn more about what's happening in our church. And while you're there, I would ask that you would give a financial gift as you are able. We are able to do the work that we do today because of your financial generosity. And so we thank you for your gifts and what you are going to give. And we don't want this to be a burden. So if you don't have it to give, we don't want to stress you out. But if you are able, we would ask for your financial support. We ask that you would be in prayer for those in our congregation who are hurting. We ask that you be in prayer for those who have lost a loved one since the last Easter or at all. We know that holidays, especially the first one, can be a very difficult time for those who have lost loved ones. And if you have lost someone recently or even years ago, and today is a heavy day for you, I pray that you would be comforted and that you would have hope uh, and knowing that we will be raised again with Christ and we will see our loved ones again. We ask that you would complete the digital connection card if you have needs or concerns. And we also want to invite you to join us for in-person worship. We are in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. You may continue to worship with us virtually. We will continue to offer this service. But we also want you to know that if you feel comfortable coming into the sanctuary, we invite you to do that. Please wear your mask. We're continuing to social distance, but we are together in person. And we thank God that after two years, we are able to be back together in this way. We, I invite you to listen to this song from the choir, and I'll be back with you in just a few moments as we hear from the Word of God.
It's preaching time, family, and I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 23, and it reads, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of the power for us who believe, 
according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you this day for the power that is at work in our Lord Christ Jesus. Now speak to us, O Lord, that we would walk in this power that you have given to us. On this resurrection day, may all of those who are down be reminded that we are raised with Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for the next few moments that are ours to share, I want to preach from the subject, resurrection power, resurrection power. Throughout history, some human beings have decided to treat other human beings like they are less than or like their lives do not matter. Scripture tells us that in the ancient days, the Hebrew people were forced to work under brutal conditions and their lives were not valued. Here in the United States, we have experienced people treating others as if they are less than. We have experienced the horrors of slavery, the horrors of Jim and Jane Crow. We have experienced patriarchy and misogyny, the mistreatment of immigrants, and much, much more. And mistreatment of other people is not just in the United States. Around the world, people face the atrocities of war and violence. But also around the world, people have chosen to reject the lie that they were less than human. We have seen people, for example, in Ukraine decide that their lives and their country matters and they will not go quietly and be relegated to lesser citizens. People, no matter where they were from, no matter what their ethnicity is, no matter what language they speak, people have decided and recognized that they are made in the image of God and that they have decided that they will not allow other human beings to devalue their lives. I believe that it is scriptures like the one I just read from Ephesians that undergirds people's resilience and their resistance to injustice. I know that people are strengthened by the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Many of us find hope in the knowledge that Christ, the one who came to bring good news to the poor, the one who came to set the captive free, that same Christ sits far above all earthly rule and authority and power and dominion. These words have helped people throughout the ages believe that they can rise above the injustice and the hurt that comes into their lives. And on this Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus is on high. Uh, we celebrate that Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. We celebrate that Jesus rose with all power in his hands. We celebrate that after Jesus rose from the grave, he performed post-resurrection miracles, and then he was carried up into heaven. And we are reminded in earlier chapters in this book that we have been raised with Christ and we share in his heavenly status. In other words, family, on this Resurrection Sunday, I want you to know that because Jesus went higher, you too can go higher. Because Jesus rose, you too can rise. You can rise above the pain in your life. You can rise above the trauma of your childhood. You can rise above a mother or a father who did not love you well or who was not present in your life. You can rise above the abuse that you are experiencing right now. You can rise above any injustice justice that the world sends your way. We share in the promise that we have received through Jesus Christ. So, so how do we do that? How do we in these earthly bodies expect to ascend to heavenly heights? How can we rise and have resurrection power? Well, family, I want to share with you what the author of Ephesians offers us. He offers guidance on how we can be with Christ, not just in the by and by and when we go on to glory, but how we can be up with Christ right now. The first thing this passage reminds us is that we are to be grounded in prayer. 
uh, Paul, who this book is attributed to, but although this may have been written by one of his male or female disciples, Paul, or whoever the author says, is, says, I do not cease or I do not stop to give thanks for you as I remember you in prayer. Now, I know that prayer is not something that we like to talk about. We like for other people to pray for us, but when the preacher asks you, how's your prayer life, many of us shrink back. But I want to ask you on this Resurrection Sunday, how is your prayer life? That's not to make you feel guilty or to get into your business, but to challenge you to consider that you must fortify yourself in prayer in order to make it on this journey. Uh, we have to stay plugged into the source that energizes us. We have to stay plugged into the source that grounds us. We have to stay plugged into the source that strengthens us if we're going to make it in this life. Many of us have electronic devices in our home, per, uh, uh, cell phones and, and computers and light fixtures, and we know that in order for these things to work, they need to be plugged into an outlet or they need to have batteries that are charged. And if we are going to be ready and fit for this journey called life, we have to stay plugged into the source. And that plug, that source is God in heaven. We have to stay connected. We have to talk to God. We have to listen to God so that we can know what we are going to do. And I know that some of us get discouraged with prayer because you prayed for something in the past and it did not work out the way you wanted to. You prayed for God to heal your mom, but mom still died. You prayed for God to give you a child, but you still didn't have a child. You prayed for God to let you live in a neighborhood and it did not work out that way. But I want you to know that just because prayer doesn't always change your outward circumstances does not mean that prayer is ineffective. Sometimes prayer changes us so that we are in a better position to face the hardships that come our way. I have a girlfriend who said that one time she went into a church meeting and she had not prayed before the meeting and all of the conflict really got to her and she lost her cool. And she said, you know, when I reflect on it, it's really my fault because I know that people are going to have conflict. I know that there are going to be challenges, but I know that I need to be prayed up so that I can handle whatever comes my way. I grew up in the church and we would often say little prayer, little power, much prayer, much power. But if you have no prayer, you'll have no power. Prayer is still one of the most important and effective weapons that we have to make it through this life. We cannot be in the place we need to be when we do not show up for prayer meeting, when we do not take time to commune with God. Some of us need to make time first thing in the morning or late at night because the world is chaotic and the world will always send us something, but we've got to be grounded and ready on the inside so that we can face whatever the enemy sends our way. A.C. Dixon said it like this. He said, when we rely upon organizations, we get what organizations can do. When we rely upon education, we get what education can do. And all of these are good and they have their place. But when we rely on prayer, we get what God can do. If you want to live in resurrection power, I encourage you to pray without ceasing. Pray when you wake up in the morning. Pray throughout the day. Pray when you walk into your job. Pray when you're walking down the street. It doesn't have to be long, drawn out formal prayers, but just short prayers. Lord, I ask that you lead me and guide me. Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord, I pray that you watch over us as we sleep. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your community. Pray for your children. Pray for your health. Pray for your church. Pray for the world. If we are going to have power, the scripture says that we need to pray without ceasing. But not only do we pray, the scripture reminds us that we should live with purpose. The author says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened and you would know the hope, riches, and inheritance among the saints. Now the world teaches us that our purpose is to get all we can, get the biggest house that we can, drive the nicest car that we can, wear the fanciest clothes that we can. The world tells us that our purpose is to impress other people, eat the finest meals, go to the best schools, drink the best wines, and there's nothing wrong with having nice things. I like nice things. I like going on vacation and staying in nice places and having wonderful experiences, but my purpose in life 
is not to accumulate all that I can. My purpose in life is not to be consumed by consumerism. My purpose in life is not to buy into and take advantage of others in a system of capitalism. My purpose is not to work, work, work so that I can buy, buy, buy. My purpose is to live the life that God intends. The world will have us so focused on getting more things and trying to impress others that we will forget and turn a blind eye to our neighbors around us who are in need. God desires more for us than that. God desires that our lives be filled with love, peace, hope, and joy, and that we share those gifts with other people. God desires justice for the world. God desires that we acknowledge that all of God's children are created in the image of God. God desires that all of God's children enjoy the fruit of God's creation. And listen, if you want to see somebody who is mean and upset and frustrated all the time, find somebody who's not living in their purpose. If you want to meet somebody who is stressed and depressed and downhearted all the time, find somebody who's not living in their purpose. If you want to find somebody who is a bully or who is belligerent and bitter, find somebody who's not living in their purpose. But if you want to see a fulfilled person, if you want to see a Christian who is happy and filled with joy and hope, even in the midst of life's per of storms, find somebody who is tapped into their person purpose. God calls us uh, to be justice minded, uh, to be righteous, uh, to care about the least of these. But purpose family comes from God. God created each one of us with a purpose and purpose allows us to live well. And again, I'm not just talking about material things, but purpose allows you to get up in the morning and be clear about what you will or won't do because this does not fit into your purpose. Purpose satisfies us. Purpose allows us to be content and purpose uplifts us. So we must be grounded in prayer and live with purpose. And finally, before I take my seat, I want to let you know that if we're going to live into the resurrection power that God has for us, then we must trust in God's power. The author says that God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and that all things are under his feet. That is what Ephesians is talking about. Now, I know for some of us, it's difficult to believe that everything is under Christ's feet. We live in a broken world. We see that evil seems to reign around us. When we cut on the television, we see story after story of a person needlessly suffering at the hands of others. And right now in our region here in New Jersey and close to New York, there are folks who are afraid to get onto the subway for fear of being shot. There are people afraid to walk down the street for fear that they'll be randomly attacked. There are Asian and Asian American people who are afraid to be in certain places because they fear they'll be attacked just because of what they look like. There are parents of children in Chicago and other major cities who are nervous and afraid to send their children to school because of the high number of children being shot by gun violence. And it's not just personal attacks we fear. There are people in Ukraine and Myanmar and all of these other countries who are experiencing violence in a place where they just want to live and have peace. Evil is real, family, and it creates trouble for us on every hand. But on this resurrection morning, Ephesians reminds us that evil doesn't have the last word. Resurrection Sunday reminds us that Jesus is on the throne and that when we feel discouraged and powerless, we can trust that God will triumph. I heard a story recently about a little girl who was outside with her dad and she was bouncing a ball and she said, Daddy, look at the ball. The harder you throw the ball down, the higher it bounces back. And her daddy began to think about that. He thought about if you throw down a plate, the plate will break. He thought about if you throw down a sandbag, the sandbag will stay on the ground. Uh, but if you throw down a rubber ball, the ball will bounce back up. And sometimes, family, the world brings things our way and the world will throw us down. 
but you can be like the plate and you can break. You can be like the sandbag and you can stay down or you can be like the ball and you can bounce back up. And the harder they throw you down, the higher you can rise. That's what Jesus did on Calvary. The enemy thought he had them. The enemy thought he had taken them out. The enemy thought that he had thrown them down and they hung them high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. But that is not how the story ends. Because on the third day, on the third day, on the third day, he rose again. Somebody knows that the Bible says that early on Sunday morning, early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He bounced back up and he went up higher. And because he got up, you can get up too. You've been thrown down, thrown down in your health thrown down in your marriage, thrown down with your children, thrown down on your jobs, but you don't have to stay down because on Resurrection Sunday, we can get up. I don't know exactly what you're going through, but I know these are difficult times, but know this, that no matter what happens, no matter how much you're thrown down, you can live in resurrection power. Jesus got up and we can get up with him. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder today that we live with resurrection power. You have defeated death, hell, and the grave and rose with all power in your hands and you give that power to us. So may we walk and live and share with that power. May we not be defeated by what life gives our way, but even when we're thrown down, God, we have the power to get back up again. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice who is struggling, who feels down, who feels low. God, I pray that you would lift them up and let them stand. For those who are healed, we pray for healing. For those who are battling addiction and other struggles. We pray for deliverance, God. For those who are struggling financially, we pray for a financial breakthrough. For those who are struggling in their family, God, we pray that you would mend those relationships. We know that you are a healer and a way maker. So we're praying for you to do that right now. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Family, if you're tuned in today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to welcome him into your heart. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. And if you make that decision today to be a part of our church family in person or virtually, complete the digital connection card in the description box and let us know. Maybe you desire prayer and we have a team that gathers each week to lift up the concerns of our community. So if you need prayer or you need a church family or you've accepted Jesus Christ, and in your life, complete the digital connection card and we will gladly connect with you. And now we continue our worship and I'll be back with you in just a few minutes to receive the benediction. God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to just to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove
heart and life. It is worth the living just because Jesus lives.